أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذا الشهر يستمر في بعض الأيام إن شاء الله لتكون أسبشال مانث a month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, even though it's mentioned in the Quran only one time, the word Ramadan is mentioned only once in Surah Al-Baqarah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in that ayah what is the most beautiful and the most important and the thing that made this month so special when he said subhanahu Shahar wa Ramadan الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. The best thing that ever happened this month is that this is the month where the best the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى was revealed. This is the month where the Quran was revealed. This is the month of Quran. This is the month of Quran. Keep that in mind because I'm going to concentrate on that point a lot during today's speech, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, in Ramadan, there are three kinds of people. There are three kinds of people who fast. There are the people who are called Al-Alma, regular fast. We can explain that one. And then there is a second category, which is the special fast. And then there is a third category, it's called Khalsa Til Khalsa. The special of the special. Now, when we mention each category, inshaAllah ta'ala, I want every single one of us to ask himself in which category he belongs, he or she belongs. And try, bi'ithnillah, to move up to the next category. The first category is Siyam al Regular fast. This is a person that is fasting from eating, drinking, and approaching their spouse. They don't eat, they don't drink the whole day, they don't touch their wife or their husband, the whole day, they're awake. But that's it. He still back lights. He still watch things that are haram. He still spend the whole day. He already, there are people, maybe you'll find it very strange. But there are people already in Ramadan, they have already decided which movies they're going to finish. They have a list, at least 20 movies, and inshallah ta'ala, Allah help me, I'll finish them all during the month of Ramadan. This is on Monday, this is on Tuesday, I sleep half a day, since I'm off from school, and the rest of the half of the day, I watch a couple of movies, and by the time I finish my movies, inshallah ta'ala, the mother will be coming, and alhamdulillah, I finish my fast. They already, these people have the list of the movies that they cannot finish. So this person, he actually do not eat, do not drink, do not approach his wife. He is a fasting person. Yeah, yeah, according to people see, he's a fasting person. But you turn your back, he talks about you. Maybe during the day, he or she are listening to music. Maybe they throw some remarks that hurt others. Maybe during the day, even though they are fasting from eating and drinking, but they are, during the whole day, complaining. It's too hot, it's too long, I can't take it anymore. Why can't Ramadan be like the Olympics? Once every four years, and every four years in a different country. It's a good idea, huh? Once every four years. <laughs> Every four years in a different country. <laughs> so he's complaining. 
But according to what we see, if you give him a water, he will not take it. He's fasting. This is the Siyam of the Amma. This is the, the majority of people. He's fasting, he considers himself fasting. He prays. Maybe sometimes they pray when they wake up. But according to him, he's a fasting person. This person, we don't want to be like them at all. That's not what we hear tonight. Then there is the fasting of the special people. These special people, they are already away from drinking and eating and approaching their spouses. Plus, they are staying away from backbiting and wasting time and, and uh, uh, vain talk and uh, listening to anything haram. They are doing what's supposed to be done and staying away from what they're supposed to be staying away from. And this, alhamdulillah, there's a lot of people like that. Most of us, if not all of us, alhamdulillah. But there's another kind of people, and that's why, inshallah, ta'ala, this Ramadan, I'm going to be from the third category. Every one of us is going to start and plan. No, 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 habibi. No, I'm no khalsa. Me, khalsa to khalsa. I'm the best. This is Ramadan. Could be my last Ramadan. I have no guarantee. So this Ramadan, I'm going to make it extremely special. Not to one, and I really need it. Not one moment to be wasted. Not one moment. And Allah, if you are, if you deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like we are concerned about dunya issues, with the same zeal and energy, and maybe more, you will find yourself in Ramadan a completely different person that inshallah ta'ala will keep you charged for the next Ramadan. And this is the whole goal of Ramadan. Ramadan is not about being pious and righteous and good and kind only in this 30 days. No. Ramadan is a training camp to keep you trained and charged till next Ramadan. By the time the battle is about to die, then Ramadan comes, boom, you're charging again. This is what the whole Ramadan is about. So you can stay all your life on the straight path. This is the whole goal. It's not about the 30 days. A lot of people think it's Ramadan. We see a lot of people, a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters fall into this trap. In Ramadan they pray, after Ramadan they stop. In Ramadan they read the Quran, after Ramadan they stop. The sister in Ramadan she put the hijab, after Ramadan she takes it off. This is not, this is, that means this person did not understand, had no clue what Ramadan is about. Ramadan is a training camp, is a training camp to keep you pious and straight the whole year. Ramadan comes back every single year to remind us of something extremely important. To remind us of why are we here. Open your ears brothers and sisters, it's very important Ramadan, what I'm about to say. Ramadan comes every single year to remind us of the reasons of our existence. Which is, we are slaves to Allah. We are all slaves to Allah. And every year Ramadan comes and reminds me, and reminds you, you are a slave. I prove it to you very, very easily. <coughs> if you have a small bottle of water, a small bottle of water, okay, and let's say Fajr is at 4 o'clock. Okay, first at four o'clock, and you have, I have a small bottle of water, and I come to you. Well, let's go to the mother. I have this bottle of water, and mother is at 8.30, and I came to you at 8.28, two minutes before the time for mother. And I offered you this glass of water, and the water is 100% halal. Halal water says on it, halal water. Huh? The world is halal. And I tell you, Akhi, so we can have it uh, read the illustration. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 8.28, Mary is in two minutes, and I have a glass of water, and you've been fasting for 17 hours. I tell you, brother, I mean, take a sip. Would he take a sip? Answer, do you take a sip? Why? 
Just how many slaps? What's the big deal? He can't sing for 17 hours. What's the big deal? The water is halal. Okay? And mashallah is 17 hours fasting. Two minutes. What's the big deal? Take a sip. You want, right? Nobody will. Why? Because the Lord is with you. Because the master did not give the order yet to drink. It reminds you, you're a slave. It's water, it's halal, and it's, I've been suffering with ibadah, but the order did not come yet. It trains you to be a slave. That's why what Ramadan is about. If you can control yourself for 17 hours away from halal, you should be away from haram the rest of your life. If you are able to stay away from halal for 17 hours a day, then it's more logical to stay away from haram the rest of your life. Allah proved it to me and you that we can stay away. We can for 16, 17 hours. We can do it. So don't say when somebody tells you, brother, please quit smoking. Don't say, I can't, brother, I tried so much. You're lying. 100% you're lying. You know why? Because you were able in Ramadan to stay for 17 hours away from smoking. And if you are sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are sincere, Wallahi, Wallahi, the worst thing, smoking, will become something that you hate so much. If you are sincere, when you ask me, Ya Allah, help me quit. If you are sincere, because there's no way you ask the Qadir, the one who's capable of doing anything at any time, huh? You're asking him to help you stay away from something, and he will tell you, no, no, get lost, never. It's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ramadan comes every single year to remind us, you are staying. Stop eating! Four o'clock, I stop. If you come with a million dollars at 405, here, brother, take a sip. No, the order came to stop. Stop eating! I start. Stop! Go! SubhanAllah. Stop and go. Ramadan every single year comes to train us. You are a slave. Now sometimes we become rich, we become highly educated, and we start thinking that it's me. I did it. Because of me. I'm the one who went to college. I'm the one. We have a, there's a, there's a term in Arabic that people use. You know, it is in Guyana, do they mean uh, Isam? Or do they mean Isam? No? Isam, in Arabic they say it. You know, uh, I don't know what Isam means. When you say somebody is Isam. Isam means like uh, he taught himself. Exactly. They say this person is Isam. He made himself by himself. Huh? Isam. There's nothing a song, there's nothing, there's nothing, you did not become rich or wise or a speaker or, or, or a, a smart because of you. Never, ever. It's all because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You took by the means, you went to college, you studied, you did, you did this, you did that. But always, always return the fadl to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not about you. Never about you. Don't ever. But now, even you now here. You attended this halaqa, you attended this class, Wallahi, it's because Allah wants you to be here. Not because you said that you decided, no, Allah could have made your son sick tonight and then you couldn't make it. Because the car did not start. Allah wants you to be here and to listen to this and wants me to say these words so that they would be a proof either with me or against me, Yawm al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the speech with us, Yawm al not against us, inshallah. Ameen, Allah. I want to have the siyam, the fasting of the special of the special. <laughs> what makes these people different than the first category and the second category is that those people use something very, 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 very smart, which is called the tijara of the Sahara. This is how the Sahaba used to do business. But what was so special about these very special fasting people 
was one word, which is, who knows, what, was, what made their, star, their, their, their fasting so special. Ikhlas, what else? One word. No. How come they became not one moment, not, and I mean it, not one moment went in Ramadan without being in Ibadah, even if they were sleeping? Huh? Come on. What is my student saying? How many times have you said that? Give it a Huh? Intention. 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 By intention, they reached this extreme high level. Even if they were sleeping, they were getting the reward. You think a righteous person is going to let eight hours of sleep go like this without hasanah? That's very long time. Very long time. I can't waste it, yeah. I can't. Even when they're sleeping, they are getting the hasanah. Hasanah is being recorded. How? Intention. Not one action goes by. Even if they're charging their phone, they're getting hasanah. How? Intention. I'm charging my phone so I can have a full battery so I can start texting my brothers and sisters and remind them of an ayah. Then the whole charging period would be recorded for their hasanat. I am sleeping, the Abbas said. I get the same reward while I'm up, the same reward as I'm sleeping. They told him how. He said, I make an intention that, Ya Allah, I'm going to sleep. So I can rest my body, so I'll be up for Qiyam. The whole period of sleeping will become a ibadah. Hasanat. I'm going to the supermarket to buy stuff for my family because I'm the father. I'm the father and I'm supposed to provide for my family. The whole trip, the whole purchase, everything back and forth becomes a ibadah. All it takes is two, one minute of pausing and saying an intention in your heart. You do not say, no way to an ad in a supermarket shop you're going to. <laughs> no, no. You don't say it inside your heart. So, it's just by making the intention. SubhanAllah, make the intention. My sister, listen to this, inshaAllah ta'ala, please. This is a prescription I'm giving you. Bi'ithnillah, we can share the ajri of our why you are cooking in Ramadan? This is my sister. Why you are cooking in Ramadan? Make the intention. Even though you're cooking for your husband and your children. Make the intention that I am cooking to feed a fasting person. You will get the same reward. Because you're cooking anyway, my sister. You are cooking anyway. Just make the intention. I am doing it to feed four, five, six fasting people. You will get your fasting and the reward like the Surah Sallallahu said. Of everybody you fasted, you brought the, they brought the fast because of your food, because of your donation, because of your because of your effort. So just make the intention, that's it. Make the intention. This is how the Sahaba used to do business with Allah. By a lot of intention. One action, one action they used to do, but with multi, multi intention. For example, used to come to Inshallah ta'ala, one of our projects in Ramadan that as men, we are never going to miss Fajr in Jamal. Right? Nobody. I'm going to ask the Imam. Nobody's going to miss Fajr in Jamal. Everybody, Fajr in Jamal. Like we said last time. Man, Masjid. They both start with M.A. Man, Masjid. You are a man, you come to the Masjid. Woman, at home. Huh? What was the other term? Female, fil bait. Female, fil bait. Male, masjid. Coming to the masjid, one action, right? I can make that action with multi intentions and I will be rewarded. Two people standing next to each other, praying Fajr. This guy is getting 5,000 hasana, this guy is getting 50. 
just because he paused for a minute before he leaves his house and he made all the intentions. I am going to the masjid and Ya Allah, I want with every single step, every turn of the wheel, one hasana recorded, one sayyidah erased, and one level elevated. Ya Allah, I want to get the reward of free fajr and jama'ah, which is as equal as staying up all night in prayer. Ya Allah, I'm going to the masjid to get nur yawm al qiyamah. Ya Allah, I want to be under your protection the whole day. Ya Allah, I want to pray jama'ah so I can get 27 times the ajr. They both came to the masjid, but this person, he made all his intentions before he comes, and the other person just came. He would be getting the reward, but the other person, because he paused and he made all these intentions before he leaves, he will get multi multiple rewards. And follow every single action you could think of during the day. Everything. Everything. You can make an intention to transfer that action from a ada into a ibadah, from a regular action into an act of worship, just by intention. And this is what made this third category their Ramadan is very special. They are away from the haram. They are away from the eating and drinking. They are away from all the haram. Plus, they do not waste a moment without making intentions about uh, to earn more hasana. Every single moment, even while they are sleeping. So this is a secret that we want to spread out to everybody we know. We want to transfer every moment in Ramadan into an act of worship. This, this could be my last Ramadan. There were brothers and sisters last year sitting like this and they were listening. And they were planning for that Ramadan. Or there were people planning for this Ramadan. Inshallah, in Ramadan I will do this. In Ramadan I'm going to get married. In Ramadan, in Ramadan. But they never made it. We had a, around four or five years ago, there was another local community, his name was Esther. And the lecture's title was, This Could Be My Last Ramadan. And Esther was sitting with us, subhanAllah, and he witnessed and he, he heard the lecture and he fasted with us. The next year, next year, a few days before Ramadan, he was gone. His son came, his name is Abu Bakr. His son came, subhanAllah, he said, he said, remember, we said last year this could be my last Ramadan, and look at this. And I start crying, my father's not with us here. 44 years old. So don't think because you are young and healthy and wealthy and strong, that means oh no, no, this is maybe the, the 80 year old people. No, 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 there's no more. That was maybe the past, but now, subhanAllah. Any moment, any second, any age, any color, any state, any status in life, you never know when time comes. So this could be my last time alone. I'm not gonna waste a moment. Not a moment to go by without an act of worship. No more. This Ramadan, listen carefully, especially the young ones. What's your name? Ibrahim, what's your name? Isa? Dawood? Sajid. Sajid. Yusuf. This Ramadan, no TV. Do you hear me? Allah's watching. You are in this house, and you say, you say this Allah, say, Insha'Allah, say that after me, Insha'Allah, no TV. This Ramadan, everybody now, this Ramadan, TV free. TV free. TV free. Huh? No TV. Every time you want to grab the remote, grab a Mus'haf. Grab a Quran. Okay? Look at the difference. Instead of watching all those stuff on TV, you could be getting 10 hasana with every letter. You watch it on cell phone. On cell phone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rephrase it. Rephrase the bar. <laughs> Listen, I told the sheikh what he did. I didn't say what's wrong. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I'm not lying. <laughs> no, so if you start, you have to name them all. No iPad, no iPads, no iPad. <laughs> Take the whole night. <laughs> no galaxy, no. <laughs> that was a good point, subhanAllah. So how could you put it in one statement that 
no, uh, no entertainment. <laughs> we don't want the ones at the same time, but to do anything. No, no. Have fun, go outside, play, dedicate half an hour, one hour a day, no problem. I don't want you to stay all night and all day reading the Quran. No. I'm telling you from now, no. But do not waste a lot of time on this TV. This TV is shaitan. This is shaitan we bring to our home. You know, you tell our children, do not steal, do not kill, do not do drugs, do not look at women. Huh? And then what do we do? We bring it all to them to the house. Don't leave the house, I'll bring it to you. <laughs> right? We bring it to the house. A big screen and you can see it nice while you screen it all. Allah ya akhwan. This September, this September coming will be six years. I have a TV in my house, but there's no no cable. And alhamdulillah, I survived then. I look at me, I'm still not half the air. No TV. No cable. The kids just play some games every once in a while. But I have no cable. And wallahi, even though my kids' age is 10, 11, and the 16, the, the peak of TV, nobody even cares. Maybe the first week or two, blah, 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 blah. Then after that, nobody cares. Wallahi, nobody even cares. And strengthens the bond between the, the family. It's very strong. There's no TV. We sit down, we talk, we, we discuss issues. It doesn't have to be all the time being. But it will change everything. Wallahi, try it out. From this Ramadan, you have 30 days of training. After Ramadan comes, disconnect your kid. Wallahi, it's not worth it. Wallahi. All garbage, all kinds of garbage. Now they're introducing the we're not talking about the truth. They're introducing that new garbage on TV that they make it the man and a man is normal and a woman and a woman is normal. SubhanAllah. And we're letting our children think about these issues. Yeah, get rid of it. Allah, get rid of it. Think, get rid of it. Cancel your cable. Be sabir in that. Don't worry. Be sabir in that. Do it. Allah, it's, it's, it's a shaitan in your home. Every time we get busy, go watch TV. We tell our children. Yeah, but leave me alone. Go put something on TV. No. No, we work so hard to have these children gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would be questioned, you would be questioned about them. So these people in the third category, they are men and women that decided not to waste one moment in our life. Inshallah ta'ala, we had a program that we distributed the other day, and inshallah ta'ala, you will have a copy of it before you leave or to be emailed to you in my lab. And the website will be uh, posted on the website of the masjid. Just an idea of what should we do in Ramadan. In Ramadan, we said that we're going to pray Fajr in Jama'ah. And the reward of Fajr in Jama'ah is immense, it's a huge yeah. Remember that you are up anyway. You are up for Sukkot. You're not going to stay 17 hours without Sukkot. You're up for Sukkot anyway. Wallahi, at that moment, the shaitan is going to come and remind you of so many things in order not to go to the masjid. So then there will be a battle between you and the shaitan. And he's going to tell you, pray at home, gather your family, yalla, make a jama'ah here, don't go to the masjid. Because he doesn't want you to get the ajr of going to the masjid. It's a huge reward, huge. And we we'll this month, 30 days of training, and the minute you get addicted to this ibadah, wallahi, you cannot pray at home anymore. You cannot pray at home anymore. It will become so part of you that you cannot pray at home. You would love to come to the Masjid and pray Fajr and Jana'ah. The people of Fajr and Jana'ah, these are the light of the Masjid. These are the Lord of the Masjid. These are the men. These are called the Knights of the Kenny, the Knights of the Night. The Knights of the Night. These are the real believers. If you want to know the strength of Islam in the community, check how many people attend Fajr. You will know how strong is that Fajr. If you ever move, if you want to ever move to another city or another town, go to that Fajr that you want to go to at Fajr time. See how many people come. If you see three or four or five, move away from that town. If you see two or three rows, that's the place to be. But not even in our countries, when I was in Sharjah, from years ago. In comparison to here, in comparison to here, Allah, it's a shame. Because over there, 
your system. And the message is right here, and surrounded by 30, 40 buildings. Every building is 20 story. Every story is four or five apartments. You're talking about 100 families in every building, and there's 30 buildings, so 3,000 families. Let's say from the 3,000, only 200 come to fashion. Allah, you will find in the masjid maybe 50, 60 people from 3,000. Maybe 100 in a busy masjid at fashion. And till now, till this day, the shaykh is still reminding me, fajr, 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 subhanAllah. And subhanAllah, the start of the year in December, January, February, fajr is right close to your uh, job time, the beginning of the day. So let's say that fajr is at 6.30, the jama'ah, and you have to get up at 7. 6.30, there's nobody in the masjid. 7, rush hour. On the highway, the SubhanAllah. And Sheikh, when Ajmi said, because the Hadith said, the Hadith said, listen carefully, my brothers. The Hadith said, if you do not get up in the middle at night to pray the Fajr, as if the Shaitan did what in your ears? You hate it in your ears. We hate the Shaitan anyway. How about you remaining in your ear? So the Shaykh was saying, SubhanAllah, at 6 30 there's nobody in the masajid, and at 7 o'clock all this thinking is not in the highways. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Shaykh is everyone's ears. SubhanAllah, how? Let me ask you a question. I mean, we did that one time in the lecture of Fajr Masjid. And answer me honestly, okay? We are brothers amongst each other. We love each other. That's the only reason I came here. Because I love it for the sake of Allah. The brothers are not paying me. I'm not asking for money. I'm coming here just for the sake of Allah. So answer me honestly. All right. If the Imam stand up tonight at Isha and he said, everybody who comes to Fajr tomorrow, inshallah, will get $500. <laughs> no, nobody's going to leave me. I'll sleep here tonight. <laughs> Well, uh, right or wrong? Nobody's leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not drawing $500. Forget about it. Excuse me, my wife. I'm not coming home. Listen, if the chef said it's going to be for a month, you're not going to see me. <laughs> you're divorced. <laughs> right or wrong? Right? What's $500 compared to under the protection of Allah the whole day? What's going to do? How much, how much it takes? It takes you 10, 15 minutes. If you really want, you can spend $500. But the hasanat, the day of judgment, one hasana is the difference between hell and paradise. In Jannah and now, one hasana. SubhanAllah. For dunya matters, we do everything possible. Allah said that. It's not something new. Our Creator said that. Tuhibhoon al ajila wa tadaruna wa tadaruna al akhir. You love the ajila, you love the quick one. And you forget about the real one, the after, the year after. And you only get what you have done. So this is the time to work. This is the time of action. There was Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned the story in one of his books. He said, a woman died from a disease. So her father, the next day, saw her in a dream. He told her, my daughter, where are you? She said, 
I'm in Jenna. He said, how's everything? She said, my father, I'm going to tell you one thing, and tell everybody, one statement of Allah, this should be our, our logo for this Allah. She said, my father, tell everybody, Kunna na'lam wa la na'lam. My father told everyone, we used to know, but we never did anything. Allah, my father, one subhanallah, if I ever come back to me, one subhanallah will change my status in a completely different place. One subhanallah. We used to know, but we don't do anything. We come and we attend, we come to Jum'ah, we come to classes, we sign up for courses, but we don't do anything. We write down all the notes. And then what? You are going to be responsible for this gathering. Me too. We all be questioned about this. You're going to sit on the day of judgment. You got a big screen TV and you're going to see this gathering right in front of you. So when you tell Allah, Ya Allah, I did not know, Allah will tell you, look at the screen. That's for you right there, sitting there. And I sent you a brother to remind you. <coughs> we heard about the importance of praying first and jama'ah. We don't go. We heard that if you say subhanallah or a hundred times, all your sins are forgiven. We don't do it. We heard that if you go visit your sick brother, whether you know him or you don't know him, you are immersed in rahmah of Allah, the whole trip, till you come back. 70,000 angels making istighfar for you. We hear about brother sick and not sick, we don't even visit. We heard that going and praying on the janazah is worth qiratayn. A lot of reward, we never went. We heard that fasting one day, other than Ramadan, one day for the sake of Allah. When December comes and January comes, yeah, I think, well, boy, I feel like it's a crime sometimes. Even though it's not, it's not an obligation. But can you imagine, yeah, Fajr is at 6.30 and Maghrib is at 4.30. And Rasulullah said, if you fast one day, he said, you are away from Jahannam 70 years. And I let the days of 4.30 and 5 and 5.30 go by like this. How? How? You know how when you have a Black Friday clearance? This is a clearance on fasting. December, January, February, this is a clearance on fasting. Take advantage, Yaqi. We know all these things and for a cup of coffee, for a bagel, for a bagel, I can't sacrifice a bagel or a cup of coffee so I can stay away 70 years. From Train yourself after Ramadan. From now on, after Ramadan, Monday and Thursday, every forget about it. Like Rasul Hassan said, three days of every month. Just three days. Monday and Thursday we make it eight, it's too much. Let's start with three days. Three days. Pick any three days if you like. And fast them. Stay away from Saturday. Any three days you like and fast them in, in, during the month. Rasul Hassan said if you do that, as if you have fasted the whole year. Train yourself. Come out from with Ramadan. Come out from Ramadan with something extra, new ibadah. I've been fasting for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and I'm still the same guy. No, nothing has advanced. Nothing. Is this Ramadan? No. Something has to change. So we used to know all these things. All these things. We used to know that one letter of Quran is ten hasana, and I do not touch the Quran except the Ramadan. Why? Why? Why don't you put to yourself? Ya akhi, one page a day, one page. Not the Ramadan, Ramadan, inshallah, we're going to finish all Quran. But after Ramadan, one page, two pages, whatever you can handle, ya akhi. But do not, do not neglect and deserve that Allah, as Allah said, اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورة. They deserted the Quran. They deserted the rulings of the Quran. Our dear young brother, he recited the ayat from Surah Al-Hashr. And even though all the hadith about the virtues of this ayat, if you say them before you see 70,000, all that stuff, they are all weak. All the hadith are weak about this. But the meaning of the ayat, Allah Allah said, if we reveal this Quran to a mountain, yani, imagine that all mankind now 
They are all mountains, and amongst them, a mountain came as a prophet. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لوعيته خاشعا متصدعا متصدعا من خشية الله الله أكبر You see this mountain shaking, trembling out of the fear of Allah When did your heart last time tremble when Allah's name is mentioned? وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون. And these examples, we set them to the people so they can ponder and think. Think about what? Think about the reason, the main reason the Quran was revealed. لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله. So they can think, who is Allah? That's the main reason. The Quran was revealed to know who is Allah, and then Allah started telling us all His beautiful names: Al Rahman, Al Rahim, Al Malik, Al Khudus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Mutakabbir. We got food. We have. cultural issues that we have to have a hafiz in our family. You ask him whether what your son is a hafiz. You know what his answer is? Because his cousin is a hafiz. How can I have five children with no hafiz? What are you going to say about them? So the Quran became memorizing, for reading, and that's it. We come here, maybe Monday night, maybe Tuesday night, we stand behind the Imam. The Imam is reciting and we stand behind him. Most of us are non-Arabs. And most of us, even the non-Arabs, don't think that every Arab understands the Quran. Most of us don't understand what the Quran is saying. So they are standing for two hours behind the Imam. They have no clue what he is saying. And most of the time also, the Imam also doesn't know what he's saying. So we stand for two, three hours. And we leave. What did you get, Yafi? Did you cry? 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 No. Did you know what he's saying? No. Which story was he reading? I have no idea. But honestly, please, as mature people, do you think this is the reason why the Quran was revealed? Just to come sit down, listen and go. That's why. That's why Ramadan goes and Ramadan comes. And nothing changed in my life. Nothing. Nothing. What's the solution? Don't want to keep complaining. What's the solution? The solution you have. When you know that the Sheikh is reciting Surah Mariam, Surah Ali Awan, just sit down. Before you come, dedicate some time and read. Read the, the meaning of this ayah. So when he says that the people are not talking in Jannat al Na'im, the righteous people are in Jannah, you start feeling happy, oh, Allah, make me amongst them. Rasulullah said, Sallam, in the Qiyam, in the Salat of Qiyam, this is Sunnah, to, when you pass by ayat of Jannah, to ask Allah Jannah. Ayat of Rahmah, ask Allah Rahmah. When you, when you pass by ayat of Adab, ask Allah to keep you away from the Adab. Rasulullah said, used to do that, only in the Sunnah, the Talbi don't do that. So when I hear, I prepare myself that the, the Sheikh is going to recite today. Inna al-muttaqina fi jannati huwa uyun. Ya Allah, make me one step. Prepare yourself. Khuduhu fa'unluh, thumma al-jaheena salluh. Take him to hell. Ya Allah, say to him, Ya Allah. This is the Ahman of the Quran, it's a beautiful. The whole Quran is recited that I have no clue what's going on. Why? Why? And I stay for 30 days, stay here every day, two, three hours. What happened? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to Surah Al-Anfal? إِنَّ لَلْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِدَتْ قُلُوبٍ وَإِذَا تُجَدْ عَلَيْهِ آيَاتٌ سَعَدَتُمْ إِمَّا يَا رَوْحِ فَسْتَوَى he said the true believers are the ones when the name of Allah is 
mentioned, their hearts start jumping. And when they hear the ayat, it increases them in the Who's increasing the value? We come and we leave, we come and we leave. Ramadan comes and we leave, and nothing is happening. This Ramadan is not going to be like that. Please, before you come, you know that the Sheikh is reciting the first juzah, the first night, the second juzah, the second night. Go and leave. Leave just a little bit, a little bit of tasir, just you have a clue of what's going on. So in that ayah, if you love that ayah, it, it, it changed your, it, it, it tickled your heart. So you wait for it when it's going to be decided, then you start asking Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me, Ya Allah, make me from the righteous people. Ya Allah, keep me away from hell. Ya Allah, bless me with sincerity. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. This is the real Ramadan. The Ramadan is the Shahi Quran, not only for it, just to read it and then wrap it with a beautiful wrap and put it back again on the shelf. This culture is killing us. Whether it's our weddings, whether it's our funerals, whether whatever it is, culture is killing us. We want to run everything according to culture. We want to run everything according to culture. You don't need a funeral like this. It's like this is the Sunnah. You ask my father, my mother, my cousin. You ask wedding is wrong. You can't do the wedding like this. Why this music and people dancing and men and women sitting on the same thing? Why? It's not now. Ha, what are you going to say about me? People are not going to come if I don't do that. Why do you care about pleasing the people? If your son is going to run away from you in the old piano, your son is going to run away from you. You're worried about the people? What are they going to do for you? You think you're going to be hungry on the day of judgment? Ida samaa un shakka. When the, when the sky is spinning and the, the, the stars are scattering and the, the ocean is exploding, he's going to remember you, oh, what was your wedding? Why did you do that in your wedding? Let's please the one that matters. Please the one, please the hay and the denial. Don't please the hay. You are all hayat now. You got to please the hay and the denial. You are all. Hi, we are all alive, but we are all going to die. So I should please the one that does not die. And that is only one. Dream. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, yeah, friend, let's make an attention from now that this Ramadan is going to be completely different. We want to be from Khasa to Khasa. Every action with an intention. I am going to put extra effort to come to the masjid. For Fajr, for Isha, I'm going to put extra effort to uh, memorize maybe a small surah. I'm going to put an extra effort to dedicate an hour every single day just for reading the Quran with some that see on the side. I'm going to start, I told the brothers the other day, there's a dua. Which surah was it? 46? 15? 16? Yeah. In surah Al-Ahqaf, Let's, let's, let's give you a homework, inshallah ta'ala. I'm not going to check on the homework after, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, the witness. Surah 46, Surah Ahqaf. Huh? Ayah number 15. The first part of it is, uh, is just uh, regular, but then it ends with a dua. Ya Allah, how beautiful is that dua. Please, memorize that dua. If you can't, if you have a hard time memorizing, open the Quran and read it. Listen to this. ربي أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضى فأصلح لي في ذريتي إني كنت إليك وإني من المسلمين يا الله يا الله It covers you It covers your parents It covers your children It covers your أعمال it covers your repentance, it covers your sins, it confirms your tawbah, everything in that small dua. Ya Allah, help me, awzir me, to be amongst the grateful slaves, to be grateful. Do you know how many blessings do you have? Well, Allah, a countless amount of blessings. Just now, just this second, we are sitting here, you are in the house of Allah. You are looking at me, you are seeing me, you are hearing me, you are understanding what I'm saying. You can get up. You can move. You are breathing. All these are done. Happening right now. Your your lungs are being washed while you're sitting here. There are people who pay tons of money for the lungs to be washed. 
the white cells are fighting with the red cells while we are talking. Allah is sending you inside protection, inside security. Ya Allah, help me to thank you the way you deserve to be thanked. And أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت عليه وعلى والدي and the blessing that you have blessed my parents. وأن أعمل صالحا ترضى. And ya Allah, help me to righteous deeds, not only righteous deeds, the righteous deeds that please you. وأصلح لي في نوريتي. And ya Allah, give me righteous children, give me righteous boys, righteous daughters, righteous men. إني تبت لك يا الله حتى خلص. I'm not that what he says. Ya Allah, my time is very beautiful this time. Wa inni mila muslim. I am a true believer. True Muslim. Every day, read this to us. And the wood. We said there are two vital times, right? Remember? We said there are very two important times of the day. In the Quran, you're not going to forget. Looks like you forgot them already. Which are the happy? Number one is. Right after you finish your suhoor and before fajr. While you finish eating, after suhoor, you ate, and there's one more minute or two more minutes for fajr to come. Sit down and do what? A lot of istighfar. Specifically, istighfar. A lot of istighfar. Why? Because Allah praised the people who make istighfar at that time when He said, Al Mustaghfirina bin Ashab. The one who makes istighfar at the time of suhoor. These are very extremely special. And the second great time is Amr. Right, right before Nahr. That's the time you can raise your hands. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. I'm having problems with my children. Ya Allah, I have. Ya Allah, I have problems with my wife and my husband. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, make her righteous. Ya Allah, my in-laws. Ya Allah, my this. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Jannah. Ya Allah. Accept my fast. When you finish Ayyadah, make sure you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it. Make sure you ask Allah to accept it. Because you never know. So those two times are very precious. Allahumma badirna Ramadan. Allahumma badirna Ramadan. Allahumma badirna Ramadan. Waj'alna fihim nassaimi. Waj'alna fihim nalqaimi. وجعلنا فيه تقارك من النار يا رحم الرحيم اللهم ربنا هذا من أزواجه وذرياته قرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إمام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسن وفي الآخرة حسن وقنا هذا النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا والله مستعان ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إن أتيت إنك أنت يا الله في يوم كان يجي بعد do not send me back to the ways I was before. A lot of us came to this country were extremely away from the deen. But Allah guided them. Tell Allah to keep us on the straight path. And tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him sincerely to make us die on the straight path. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khair wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me from the people who practice what they preach. And may Allah make us all from the people who, when they listen to something, they apply the best of it. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر